So today we're basically going to teach you uh, how to make two very simple dishes. Now before we start, uh, some safety, make sure you wash ingredients properly, use the freshest ingredients you can find, and use a sharp knife so it doesn't slip and you don't cut yourself. Let's begin. So first dish is a caprese salad which originates from Italy. The ingredients are mozzarella cheese, tomato, basil, olive oil, balsamic vinegar, sea salt, and a bit of honey. So first you want to chop the uh, top of the tomato off because you don't want that and then chop the rest of the tomato into one centimeter thick slices. So tomatoes are actually a relatively large contributor to greenhouse gases when they are grown in heated uh, greenhouses. Naturally heated greenhouses are 4.7 times more efficient in terms of the amount of greenhouse gases that they emit. So it is important to get organically grown, sustainably grown uh, tomatoes because their use of pesticides is less and uh, therefore there's in general less pollution from greenhouse gases and the like. All right, so now you notice the cheese is slightly larger than the rest of the tomatoes. So for the cheese, what you would do is cut it into either a half or quarters and then put those on top of the tomatoes instead. Now as for cheese, as you know, uh, the cows produce cheese, or produce milk, which is turned into cheese. And cows are usually raised in CAFOs, or concentrated uh, animal feeding operations. And this is an extremely uh, poor use of our land, because it concentrates the animals, and they're basically walking around in their own waste. And this use of land actually causes pollutants from the waste, such as nitrates to leach into the soil. So these concentrated animal feeding operations actually uh, release a lot of pollutants into the environment. Yeah. And they also release methane, which is a very, very potent greenhouse gas. Now all of this pollution can leach into streams and groundwater and cause eutrophication, limiting the uh, freshwater sources we already have. Now, why is mozzarella cheese a better type of cheese to use in general? Well, because mozzarella cheese is the closest type of cheese to the actual milk from which it was produced. And thus, the production of it releases a lot fewer greenhouse gases. It requires fewer cows, uh, less milk, etc. to actually create the cheese. And so essentially, we are releasing less pollution by using mozzarella cheese instead of using other cheeses uh, in salads. So now what you're going to do is you're going to take the mozzarella cheese that you've sliced and you're going to stack, stack them on top of the tomatoes. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take some basil, a basil leaf, and put one basil leaf on each of these stacks. As for basil, basil is loaded with many, many health benefits, such as being a rich source of vitamin K, beta carotene, iron, and it has antibacterial, anti-inflammatory, and antioxidant properties. So basil is actually very, very helpful in um, alleviating a lot of illnesses. Now afterwards, what you're going to do is you're going to take uh, some extra virgin olive oil and you're going to basically drizzle it over the top of the salad, however much you want. Now extra virgin olive oil has two big byproducts, olive mill wastewater and olive press cake. And this process yields about 20% olive oil and the other 80% is waste. Now this wastewater can't be sent to ordinary treatment plants and uh, safe disposal of this waste is of environmental concern. And olive oil actually is, um, the olive oil waste is actually very difficult to biodegrade. Now this is an issue, but compared to the other types of vegetable oils that are produced, olive oil is actually one of the most efficient. So whereas olive oil uh, has about an 80% waste, uh, oil from corn, for example, usually has around 95% or more waste. So 
Now what you're going to do is you're going to make a sort of drizzle, uh, sort of dressing with balsamic vinegar and honey. Now, balsamic, balsamic vinegar uh, is also extremely uh, helpful to health because the antioxidants boost the immune system, fight cell damage, and uh, basically incorporating it encourages people to eat more uh, vegetables. Now, of course, with the increasing human population uh, brought about by more efficient farming techniques and irrigation techniques, humans need to find a way to decrease their ecological footprints. And by encouraging more people to eat uh, vegetables, uh, then we can decrease our ecological footprint and sustain this growing population because meat is more land inefficient than vegetables are. As for the honey, it is important to note that the honey should be co um, come from naturally sourced, uh, responsible sources because, of course, honeybees are actually disappearing due to, well, we don't actually know. could be a combination of multiple things, including stress from being moved around too often. So be sure to buy honey from local sources. So in general, the this dish is a lot more environmentally friendly than a lot of other dishes. If you use the right ingredients and source from the right places, this is a very delicious and healthy way to start off any meal. Now we're going to go on to the main course. Alright, so this main dish is going to be a vegetarian curry. You're going to need onions, bell pepper, leek, lemongrass, coconut milk, carrots, peas, corn, spring onions, butter, curry powder, brown sugar, and brown rice. So what you're first going to do is you're going to just slice the onions, take off both ends, and slice them like you normally would. And do the same to the leeks, slice them into uh, thin slices. And so what we're going to do is you're going to take some butter and you're going to saute the peas, corn, um, leek, and onion until the onion is somewhat translucent. Alright, so why a vegetable curry? Well, as you already know, animals take up a lot of space in terms of the food that's required um, to actually feed them, as well as the physical space the animals take up themselves. And making room for animals is actually a reason why deforestation is so prevalent, because animals and their meat generate a lot of revenue. So, in general, this deforestation is causing habitat fragmentation. And this habitat fragmentation is very, very concerning, because of all the causes of extinction, habitat degradation is the most dangerous, the most prevalent, and uh, the cause of most extinctions. So this habitat fragmentation, habitat uh, destruction, makes it so that the residents of the forest no longer have anywhere to live. And of course this is very concerning. So the more vegetables that we consume, the closer we are to uh, the producers that we consume, the less land we actually take up, and the less we need to deforest, and therefore the less species end up dying. Anyways, so after uh, the onions are translucent, what you're going to do is you're going to take the potatoes, you're going to have them. Uh, if you have large potatoes, cut them into about one square inch cubes, uh, and then throw all of the onions, leek, peas, and corn into either a crock pot or a dutch oven, something like that, and add curry powder. Add however much you want. If you would like a stronger curry, you can add more. I usually use around four tablespoons. And then you can add some uh, chili if you would like as well, some pepper. Now you can add in uh, the rest of your ingredients, including the potatoes. Uh, you should add about one and a half cups of coconut milk, a bit of sugar and salt to taste, and then about three or four tablespoons of Greek yogurt. Now you can leave this to sit until the potatoes are soft, and then you will have a very nice curry. 
Now essentially by minimizing the number of steps between uh, the sun and our own bodies for energy, we can limit the amount of fossil fuel resources that we use in transporting materials, and we can limit the amount of energy we use to keep everything alive, run the machinery that grows everything, and by limiting all of this, humans can positively impact the earth through the choices we make about our food. And so something very simple like these two dishes can actually benefit the earth by decreasing the amount of typical consumption uh, that we normally go through. So overall, as you can see, you can create some very delicious food with some very simple ingredients, some very simple steps, not too much work, and at the same time, you can positively impact the earth by making good choices in where you source your food and the kinds of foods you eat.